Hello designers, welcome back to another video. So if you've seen my previous video, I have actually launched a free Figma interactive UI kit. This UI kit basically allows you to drag and drop components and create an interactive prototype right away. A lot of people have liked it. And if you have not checked it out yet, the link is in the description. Go ahead and download it and use it right away. So a lot of people have asked me like how to create these components from scratch. So I thought, why not I create a short series on this where I pick up each component in a video and show you how to create that from scratch. I'll try to create a detailed video, but still I'll try to keep it as precise and quick as possible. So in our today's video, we're going to talk about how to create the interactive buttons. So without any further ado, let's jump right onto my Figma screen and see how to create this. So here we have a brand new Figma file and all that is there in this is some color styles that we used in the UI kit and nothing else. It's brand new. So the first thing I'll do is I'll place a text here and I'll type in button. Okay. And once you do this, the next thing you want to put it inside a frame, but we won't be using a normal frame. We want it to be auto layout because our button has to expand as we increase the text in it. So it has to be flexible in that terms, right? So what I'm going to do here is right click and say auto layout, add auto layout, or you just do the shortcut, which is shift a. So I recommend you use the shortcut. So I'm going to press shift a and it adds a frame outside it, which is actually auto layout. And once we have this, the next thing I want to be doing is add some fill to it so that it looks like a button. So we'll go to the right side here and click on the plus button here and we'll add a fill to this. So I'll use the colors from the styles, or you can just add a color that you like. So I'm going to use this color here and the next thing is I'm going to add some rounded corners to it so it looks a bit rounded at the edges so that looks good and the next thing we want to do is add some padding to the button right so to the right and the left it is good to give some extra padding so this is to the right and the left right so I'm going to make this let's say 30 so now we have 30 at these two sides and 10 on these two sides which is perfect right so now it looks like a proper button so the next thing we want to do is create a component out of it and so that we can add more variants like I showed you there right so we want to first create a component so for that I'm going to use this option here which says create component and now your button is a component so now that you have a component now we want to add different variants to it for that again you have this option which allows you to add variants so I press on this one and now as you can see uh, this is the main component which has multiple variants inside it right so the very base part of it is ready now and now what we want to do is create different states for the button right so if you see here I have two buttons and they have a property so if I click on the main frame here you can see that there's a property which gets added and you want to call this property as state right because I want a normal state then I want a press state or if it is a web app you want the hover state and then you want a disable state so multiple states right so we want to call this property as a state so that you can change it uh, when you use it on your screens so we'll double click on this one and now we are able to edit this thing so I'm gonna call it state and the first one I'm gonna call it as default which looks good and the next one I'm gonna call it as a press state because I'm going to use this on a mobile so I'll call it press state and in this scenario I want it to be a darker shade so I'll unlink this one and I'll try to make this a bit darker so that once you press the button you have this darker state and then along with this I also want one more state which is the disabled state so let's see how we can add that and I'm going to add a new variant here so just click on the main frame and you get this option to add a variant so I press on this one I have a new button or a new variant that gets added and this one I'm going to call it as disabled and in this one I I just want it to be grayed out. So I'm going to select the color, which is a bit grayed out. So I'm going to choose this and the inside text. You can again give it a darker shade of a gray so that it gives the look and feel of a disabled button. So now you can see we have different states for the button and each of them are named, right? So if I click on the main frame, you can see what all different states you have here. And now if I want to add this, I just need to take a frame or a screen that I'm designing and go to assets. And in the assets, I'll have this button as a local component. I just have to drag it and bring it here and now you can see that from the right side I can choose different states for the button so this is your default state and then I have a press state then I have a disable state so everything is possible from here right but now I also want a secondary button right you can't design the complete application with a primary button you also need to have a secondary button and a tertiary button so we'll see how to create a secondary button in this video and you can repeat the same process for the tertiary button as well so I'm gonna place this a bit to the right and I'm gonna increase the size of this frame here and now I'll select all these buttons and just duplicate it you can use command D or control D to duplicate or just press on option click and drag 
and you'll be able to duplicate it, right? So now I want to add a second property. Right now we just have a state property, but I want to add a new property to this, which will determine the type of the button. So for that, I'm going to choose the frame here and I'm going to click on properties and create a new variant property. And I'm going to call this as type. So by default, I want the type to be as primary. So I'm going to name this as primary as the default and say create. So right now all these buttons are having the type as primary, but I want a set of buttons to have the type as second. Right, so I'm going to choose all of these here. I'm going to select the type and I'm going to say it as secondary. So now these are primary and these are secondary, right? But we have to change the style of this as well. So I'm going to quickly uh, change the style for this one. So so as you can see, I've already added the styles for this. And if I click each of these buttons, uh, they are the secondary buttons, right? So, but the state shows the wrong value. So what I'm going to do, click on the first one and choose the state from here as the default state. So this is the secondary button default state. So I'm going to choose default. And this is when you press the secondary button. So I'm going to go to state and choose pressed. And this one is when it's disabled, right? So I go here and choose disabled. So right now we have three different states and two different types of buttons. So now everything looks good. Let's see how this behaves on the screen. So let's go back to the frame and see how we can use this button now. So I'm coming back to the frame here and I'll just delete this. Let's do it from the beginning. So I'll drop in a button here. And then the first thing I want to choose is what type of a button it is. So it can be a secondary, it can be a primary. So the first thing I want to choose is the type. But if you see here, the type is at the second option. Let's bring it to the top. How do we do that? Just go back to your components, select the frame here and just bring the type to the top, right? You just click on the left, you have this grab option and then you can change the position of it, right? So just change that. And now I'm coming back to the button. So now you can see that the type is on the top. So once you drop in a button, the first thing you want to choose is what type of a button it is. So I want a secondary button. So I choose secondary here and then uh, I want it to be the disable button. So if I choose a disable button, you can see that it changes to this disabled state and I can just duplicate this and bring in a new button here, make this as primary and this could be your default state. So there you go. That is how you create such a buttons. And the best part is once you expand it, there's a mistake here. So this has to be in the center, right? So how do we fix that? Let's go back to our buttons components here. So I select all these buttons and in the auto layout, you can see we have the option to align the elements inside the frame to whatever area that you want. So in our case, we want this to be in the center here. So once I choose the center option here, you can see that it got fixed and now you can resize your buttons as much as you want, right? So how much ever you resize it, it works perfectly. And also if I want to change the button text in it, just select the text and say this is a big button. And as you can see, based on the text, the button actually increases in size and you don't have to do anything, right? And the next thing you have to do is add interactions to this. So for that, I'll go back to the components. I'll select the prototype tab and this is your press state, right? So one press of this button, you want it to change to this. So I'm going to drag a link from this and drop it onto the second variant here. And here you want to choose while pressing because once you press on the button, you want this micro interaction to happen. So I click on this while pressing and let it be instant. Everything looks good. And we'll do the same thing for this as well, right? So once you press on this, I want it to be while pressing. So if you're on a web, you can use the while hovering feature or while hovering, and that will be the interaction for the web. But this is for the mobile, so I use the pressing state. And now let's, uh, you know, play this and see how it behaves. So there you go, we have it. And as you can see, once I press on this, it changes to the next state, the press state. So it looks like I've covered most of the things on how to create a basic interactive button on Figma. Okay, wait, let me add one more thing here. So let's say you want to add an icon to your uh, button. So you can copy an icon icon from somewhere. So I've just copied an icon here. Uh, let me go back to the design tab. Just choose the button that you have here, right? And just paste it. So I'm just doing a command V or control V since I've already copied an icon and it gets pasted into the auto layout, right? Since it's an auto layout, it gets aligned properly. And if you want it on the left, just change the position here, just click and drag to the top and it gets shifted to the left. So wherever you want the icon, just place it. And that's how you can have the icon in the button as well, right? And it's going to respect the spacing as well. So as you can see, it just respects the spacing. And let's say you also want an option to turn on or turn off the icons. How do we do that? It's pretty simple. Just select the icon on your component and to the right uh, in the layer option, you have this option which says create Boolean property. Just click on this and it gives a name automatically show icons based on the layer. You can change this to icon uh, and the default value is true. Just say create. And now once you click on the component instance on your frame, 
you can see a third property gets added which is icons and I can just turn this off or turn this on as per the need on the design that I want. And that's it for this video guys. I think I covered most of the basics that are needed to create a simple interactive button in Figma. Hope you found this helpful and in the next video I'm going to show you how to create the input fields that we saw in the UI kit. So for that you can check this video right here.